Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here again with Droid Life. So I've got a Pixel 4 XL sitting here in front of me. I know it doesn't look different, but it actually is kind of different and kind of cool. So Google announced Android 11 today, at least the first developer preview, and we've got it up and running. So yes, there's, there's some stuff to talk about, some stuff to show off. Here is a first look at Android 11. So, so just so we're straight here, it is both Android 11 and Android R. You guys remember last year, the Android Q, we were supposed to get a Q dessert name and Google said, ah, we don't wanna do this anymore, so it's just Android 10. That's the case again here. It's Android 11 developer preview. However, if you dive in and go into some settings and scroll to the bottom and go to system and advanced or about phone, whichever you wanna do, you can see right there, it's called Android R. So when you flash this first developer preview, it is actually called Android R. So Android 11 R, same thing, but whatever, we'll, we'll call it both things. Anyways, just getting that straight. Uh, the next thing you'll see, it's something I just toggled off and on there, that is that would be dark theme. So Google added in Android 11, scheduling. This should have been there probably last time when they introduced dark theme and it's on Samsung phones. I know everyone, we, we know it's on other phones. Google's just finally doing it. We have uh, a couple of options. You can have no schedule, so you can just manually toggle it on and off all the time. You have turns on from sunset to sunrise, or you can set a custom time, which I've done there. We're gonna leave it off because uh, this phone gets greasy and I don't want you to see that with all the dark background. So anyway, dark theme scheduling. Okay, the next thing, uh, this this is almost never working for me at this moment in time. So we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna send myself a message and we're gonna see if it works. Uh, mm -mm, I don't know, it, it's supposed to be bubbles. Do you guys remember bubbles? Remember Android 10, Google introduced this concept called bubbles, which was basically just a copy of Facebook chat heads where you get little floaty bubble things. They're here, they're supposed to be here. Um, so in, in order to enable them, you just take a messaging app, long press on it and say, show as bubble, there's a little option. And there it goes, you can, you can see it right there. So there's a bubble, so you can tap on that. And here's your conversation. So here's a Google Voice conversation where I was testing a million times, you can see that and it wasn't working properly. It did this time, the magic of video. So those are bubbles, you can slide those around, flash it down here to this X to make it go away. You can move it over here if you'd rather have it over there. Anyway, it's just a way to keep track of your conversations. I would attempt to get that this Hangouts conversation in there as well, but uh, I, I, don't, I don't trust it at all. It's, it still seems really buggy. Either way, it, it's coming finally this time. Uh, speaking of conversations though that you're having, you'll notice if I swipe this down where that Hangouts conversation is, there's a section here called conversations. So Google's separating some stuff. So we have the silent notifications area, which you can see. We have a conversations area, which should be messaging apps like Hangouts, voice, uh, Google messages, whatever. And then there's also another section that would be in the middle if I were to like take a screenshot or I get an email, it, it would be in its own thing. So Google's separating all of these things out, which is, well, I guess whatever, organization's never a bad thing. Another thing they're gonna do, which I, I don't believe I can do this yet, but if I were to reply to myself, I could potentially attach an image in the reply within this notification. Like that's a pretty powerful little tool there. So Google's enabling attachments via messaging apps, via notifications. Kind of cool, right? Okay, anyway, let's, uh, let's talk about, no, uh, well, pfft. Permissions, there we go, how about permissions? So if I fire up the camera for the first time or any app that requests the location of my phone, this has changed. In Android 10, it used to say, uh, let this access location while I'm using the app, deny it or use access location all the time. So Google's simple, simplifying that even further and actually restricting apps even further. So now it says, only this time. So I fired this up, I could say, use this this once, and then when I close the app and reopen, you should ask me again. And then the other one is, while I'm using the app. So there's no longer a, you can use my location all the time sort of thing, which is probably a good, a good thing to do, but I'm just curious how that's gonna interact with like fitness apps and Google Maps and a whole bunch of things like that. Like Google Maps, I share my location all the time with my wife if it doesn't have that permission. I don't know, I'm sure Google will figure it out. We're just gonna let them figure that out. So uh, anyway, new permission, it has it has changed. Uh, let's see, if we swipe down this and I swipe over here once, you'll see I have a shortcut to screen record. So in Android 10, there was once a option, kind of buried, you could sort of enable it though that allowed screen recording. And I think at one point you could even put it in here. So you could sort of kick off a screen record and then it disappeared and then we got stable Android 10 and you know, it just was never a thing. Well, it's back, at least in this preview, in Android 11. So uh, if all I do is click start there and it says, hey, you wanna record? And I say, yes, I do. Start now. Please start now. Start now. Start now. 
uh, maybe kind of broken. Either way, when it works, you click start now and then it records. And uh, I'm gonna try that again. I wonder why that's not working. Maybe it's because I have this chat head. Go away, chat head. Uh, swipe over, start record, start out. Maybe that was it. So it's actually recording right now. You can see I'm swiping around, swiping around. So if I swipe this down, there's a couple of ways you can know that your phone is doing a screen recording. So um, if I go back up here, you see that little sort of reddish cast looking icon? That means it's recording. And there's also a system UI icon that says recording. So you can swipe that down and go stop, pause, cancel. If I hit stop on that, it then saves my recording. I can tap on that and it should it should be, yeah, there you go. You can see it moving around. That's not me doing that. It's not me being a weird ghost. It actually is me recording stuff. So anyway, it saves to Google Photos and on your phone and all that stuff, kind of fun. So this next one, I can't really show you because I don't have it enabled, but the, the folks at XDA discovered what they believe is a new UI for screenshots. I'll, I'll, I'll put the overlay up in just one second, but you guys know how to take a screenshot, right? You volume down, power, takes a screenshot, does this flash thing. You get this notification that pulls up and says share, edit, delete. Well, they found what they believe is evidence that you will be able to do scrolling screenshots, yay. Uh, also, just a slightly tweaked UI and how that will all work. Um, so yeah, we might have scrolling screenshots and a new way to, uh, to deal with screenshots in general. Uh, the next thing I would show you though is like, let's say I wanna share something. So I have this uh, screenshot, I tap share. You guys know the share menu, right? So the share menu pops up. These are shortcuts to people and apps you might have used in the past. So in Android 10, there was initially an option where you could pin, see this bottom row down here. The top row I believe is just always suggestions for the app or whatever you're sharing. Uh, the bottom row though is apps you can actually pin there. So if I long press on like this one, you'll see I can unpin photos because I've already pinned it. Um, but I had it pinned because that's one of those apps I use all the time to share screenshots. So you long press on whatever you want to pin and you tap in and then it stays there. And you could go in here and like, let's say I always do Google drive or something. So I could long press on Google drive, tap pin. And then it also now is up there in those shortcuts. Pretty handy. It's back for now in Android 11, at least this developer preview one. Uh, one of the cool things that, uh, that we've noticed so far is with Bluetooth. If you uh, have devices connected, uh, let's see, here we go. Here are some Galaxy Buds. Fire those up, we'll see if that connects real quick. Uh, but what you can do now is uh, toggle on airplane mode. And when you toggle on airplane mode, Google said this fix was coming. Uh, Bluetooth did not cut out. See, I have airplane mode on, everything's cut off not my Bluetooth. So kind of a cool little feature there that, uh, you know, when you jump on an airplane and you turn on Bluetooth or turn on airplane mode and then all of a sudden your music starts blasting out of your phone speaker, it's because it was disconnected from that. So they fixed that, very cool. Uh, let's see, so the last thing I would probably show you then would be a new motion gesture. So let's turn airplane mode back off, please. Uh, so let's go into settings here. So on the Pixel 4 specifically, so we'll go system motion sense. So you know it has motion sense, the project solely sensors up top, and you can wave around and, and change tracks and all that. There's actually a new option in this Android 11 preview, uh, pause music. So if you have music playing, you just put your hand over and push your hand down and it pauses music. And then if you wanna play again, you put it over and you go like this again and it plays. It's very simple, it works about as well as all the other gestures, but it does work. So new gesture, I don't know if it's just happened to show up in this build or what the deal, but it is there. Um, as far as other stuff that's new, um, it's mostly kind of developer-y sort of things. So, you know, like there's more 5G support built in, you know, cause we're preparing for the year of 5G thanks to Qualcomm forcing 5G and all new phones. Um, for pinholes, you know, so like the phones that have the little hole cut out for their front facing cameras and then waterfall displays or those ones that have the really steep fall offs of their displays on the side, uh, there's just more support so apps can look even better in those situations. Um, Google's updated some biometric support with Google Play system updates, you know, those behind the scenes updates where you can where Google has figured out a way to update pieces of Android to add to security and things like that without having to do a full system update. Those have more support for more modules. So Google says they can update 22 different modules now. Uh, there's call screening improvements for stir, shake, and spam calls and things like that. Uh, when you open your camera, for example, this is actually kind of cool. So, you know, when you have your camera open and then somebody sends you an email or a text message or something like that, and your phone vibrates like this while you're taking a picture, and you could that could ruin your picture. So Google's built in the option where uh, developers could add uh, a sort of a, a silence on the vibration motor during those situations. So that should be cool once that rolls out. Uh, 
for now though, that's kind of it. This was not meant to be the definitive Android 11 update video. Uh, this is the first developer preview. Things will come, things will go, things will change. It, it, it's gonna change a lot actually. We've got, like I believe, at least three developer previews, another three betas, and then stable in Q3. So lots of stuff going on. This is just a first look. We are Droid Life. Peace.